Greetings, everyone, and welcome to another edition of the Spirit Side Podcast. I'm your host, Paul James Caden, and I thought today we would just have a little discussion. One of those podcasts where we throw out a subject and see what sticks to the wall. And um, I've been really thinking when I was planning for this episode of the Spirit Side, what subject do I want to talk about? And it just kept coming up into my mind, this thing that a lot of people seem to be talking about right now. There's uh, articles on the internet coming from even the scientific community that are hypothesizing about this. And uh, that is that UFOs could be us human beings from the future, time traveling back to the past. And of course, the theory is that they might be coming back to the past to correct a certain problem, cure a certain disease that almost wiped us out, or to maybe change the course of history, change our decisions, because maybe the future at one point was kind of bleak, and maybe humanity almost didn't make it. I mean, the speculations and theories about this get as sci-fi as, as you want them to be. It could really go on and on with, uh, you know, why we would be visiting ourselves from the future and even why we would look so peculiar. Now, this is not an old theory. I mean, the time travel UFO uh, theory has been around for a number of years. I've been interested in UFOs for quite a long time now. I mean, we're talking uh, at least a couple of decades or more. And, uh, you know, it's it's always been out there, you know, that these, these could be uh, us from the future coming back for some reason. And maybe these beings that some people call the greys, you know, the big bulbous head, uh, dudes with the big black almond shaped eyes. They're usually the ones who do, uh, the mass amount of abduction in the UFO scenario. And, uh, you know, some people speculate, maybe the grays are us. Maybe this is what we've evolved into, you know, over time, thousands or millions of years, who knows how far into the future. Uh, mankind goes and what he may have, uh, you know, evolved into to survive in a new environment. Maybe something happened on the earth as we uh, talked about before and man had to evolve. And, uh, you know, there's a little bit of um, a little bit of speculation now that people are saying, well, maybe in the future, we have all this going on where man wants to go to the moon and build colonies and then out to Mars and build a colony and, you know, maybe other habitable planets that are in the the uh, the sweet spot in, in the, uh, the cosmos. You know, maybe we made it out to outer space, maybe somewhere somewhere out in the far flung future, you know, mankind is living on. Uh, Mars and other planets, and maybe this is what he has evolved into. You know, different planet, different atmosphere, different things to adjust to. There's also a little bit of speculation I heard that maybe human beings in the future, whether they dwell on Earth or other planets, maybe they did encounter another species of humanoid out there somewhere in the galaxy and they made it and this is the offspring between alien and human so it's kind of our alien human ancestors coming back for some reason to visit us or uh, as i said change the um, the trajectory of our history based on our uh, <laughs> very uh, you know, spurious decisions as the human race that we sometimes can make. Uh, they're here to try and help avert certain problems or disasters. But, uh, you know, for me, one who has been steeped in 
the paranormal, uh, the spiritual, and even an amateur, or if you like to say it more, highfalutin and amateur uh, ufologist for a number of years. Uh, I have some questions and uh, a few problems with the time travel theory. Now, one is, you know, maybe, okay, let's say that maybe human beings evolved into what looks like the greys. Decades, you know, millions, billions of years from now. Um, the, the, the thing that's odd for me about it, unless you're talking about evolution of body, mind, opening more of the mind, more of the consciousness, or you're getting into that theory of humans breeding with something else out there and the, the greys, the aliens are kind of our... Uh, half human, half other ancestors from somewhere else. Um, one, of the, one of the issues I have when it comes to ufology is the almost supernatural abilities of not only the UFO, the, the crafts themselves, but the occupants of these crafts. You know, most people who are interested in the topic of UFOs know that these things can appear, uh, you know, and disappear almost at will. They're there, then they're gone. In World War, uh, in World War II, when there were these orbs of light flying around, the, uh, the Germans thought they belonged to us. Uh, we thought they belonged to the Germans, these orbs of light that would kind of fly around the, the planes and the fighter pilots didn't know what they were and uh, they named them Foo Fighters. And uh, they would shoot at these things and say that, you know, the bullets would, would pass right through them, almost like they were a ghost, you know, they, they weren't solid. And, uh, you know, that's not unusual when it comes to UFOs, the, the craft themselves, is that people have said, you know, these things have come straight down out of the sky and almost as if they would crash into the ground but just kind of disappeared into the ground like they went underground or into the earth. They appear sometimes as just very luminescent, orbs of light and then they're solid where they look metal and metallic, you know, the classic saucer shape or the, the cylindrical UFO, but then they can be, you know, just light, you know, bright light and then they're gone. So, I mean, what would the technology be for something like that? You know, let alone the occupants of the UFOs, I mean, when we're talking about the abduction scenario and, uh, you know, there's, I believe there's something to it. I mean, there, there may be people out there that still find that, oh, ha ha, this, this is funny, you know, uh, anal probings by little green men or whatever the case may be. But there's been, uh, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of research into this, and there was the one individual, his name was John Mack. I believe he worked for uh, Harvard University, and he was a psychologist, head of their psychology uh, department. And um, he started studying this whole abduction phenomenon. He was looking to disprove it, and the evidence was so compelling, the people that he talked to and talked to under hypnosis and the cases that, that he gathered and meetings that he went to, uh, he came to the conclusion that, no, this, this is a real phenomenon. This guy was no joke. I mean, he was highly educated. He set out to debunk this, um, you know, this whole abduction phenomenon. And uh, when he came to the conclusion, no, you know, I think there's something to this. Some, something is happening. Uh, I believe he lost his uh, his position at Harvard. They said, hey, you know, you you recant this or you're out. You know, we can't have, you know, high uh, 
high up university uh, professors, you know, walking around talking about uh, little green men taking people in the night, and he he wouldn't, you know, he uh, he stuck to his guns, and that that says a lot. So I I believe uh, you know through the work of John Mack and others you know that there's there's definitely something going on with this and um you know these beings these these occupants there is there's an old movie uh if you watch it it's called uh Intruders and uh, one of the characters I, I, I think actually plays uh, John Mack in, in the movie. I believe this was a book. I want to say it was Bud Hopkins. But if you look up the, the old book, uh, Intruders, and it's, it's one of the old, uh, you know, uf, you, uh, ufology authors. And they m- made a movie out of it. And it's, man... You know, I think it was a made-for-TV movie, but it was just, it was just creepy in parts. You know how, uh, you know, there's a woman who wakes up in the middle of the night and looks out of the window, and she sees this dog just sitting in her yard in the night, like, looking at her through the window. And she feels very uneasy, and then suddenly the dog isn't a dog anymore. It's, uh, you know, a gray, a gray alien. And it ends up coming uh, through the window and and taking her. And there was another scene in the movie where uh, I don't know if it was the same woman. And it's kind of hard to find. Um, if you go on something like iOffer.com, you could probably find uh, a, a recorded version where somebody tra- you know has a copy and put it onto DVD. That's what I have. It's it's a good copy, but very interesting movie. It's it's one of my favorite, uh, one of my very favorite alien movies, Intruders. And uh, again, I don't remember if it's the same woman or someone else who uh, awakens in the night and she she hears noises outside, and she you know, looks out the window and there's, you know, it's the middle of the night and there's uh, men outside working like they're, they're working on the street, like they're, they're town workers uh, or county workers. And she's thinking, well, you know, that's odd. You know, why are they out there? You know, uh, it's such an hour uh, of night. And uh, she soon realizes that uh, these men working, you know, on the street near her home, uh, they don't have any faces they're just blank and they notice her looking at them through the window and again you know a group of them approach the house they come right through the wall and you know they take her into you know the the abduction experience and uh you know so that that movie and in that book again it's something that's not unheard of in the abduction uh scenario is this shape-shifting element of the aliens, the UFO occupants, where they look like something else and then suddenly they're not. And that's a very, uh, that's a very creepy element of the, uh, of the, of, of the abduction experience. And, you know, you would have to think if, if these are human beings that evolved how, what kind of evolution did mankind go through that now suddenly they're, they're able to walk through solid matter, come through a solid wall or a window and take someone, you know, when did they, or how did they evolve into having the ability to shape shift? Or is this some kind of optical or uh, mental illusion that they're pulling on people, that first it's a dog, then it's an alien. Well, now it's a group of people, a group of men working on the street or the road outside your home. Uh, then they have no faces, and then they're coming through the wall, and they're, they're taking you, and then they're gray aliens once again. You know, So I find that kind of um, – I find that a little problematic when it comes to the time travel theory of UFOs. 
I mean, yeah, we could we could look at the craft themselves and say, gee, uh, maybe they're, they're from another planet or maybe they're from the future. OK, you know, that it's plausible. It's possible. It's it's a theory like anything else. But then when you get into the nuts and bolts and, and that's what that's what always kind of made me not so keen on the the, the time travel. Uh, theory of UFOs because there's so much more to the UFO phenomenon that I, I just don't think is factored in to the time travel element or the time travel theory like these almost supernatural uh, feats of walking through a solid wall, coming through a solid window, looking like something else and then suddenly you're an, a gray alien, you know, the, the very bizarre hypnotic uh, state that people who have the abduction experience are put under. They're, they're paralyzed. They, they can't move. Um, many times they don't remember. They have missing time. So how did humans, unless again, you're talking about breathing with something that is alien, something uh, out there, you know, uh, some kind of life form that's humanoid that human beings may be bred with uh, somehow that had these abilities and the offspring has those abilities. But still, that's that's kind of um, – I always say that that verges on the paranormal and the supernatural with, with some of these uh, feats that these craft and that these beings pull off. And then there's also the issue of all the different kinds of aliens or UFO occupants that people see. You have the insectoid. You have the reptilian. Some of them are gray. Some of them are white. Some of them are uh, very short and wear almost what looks like hooded robes with very bright red glowing eyes. Some of them look like the greys, but they're a little bit taller and they're black and they have very sinister red glowing eyes and their their fingers, where they have three or four fingers, are almost uh, claw-like. They look very sinister. And, uh, you know, people that encounter some of these other uh, species of aliens, uh, particularly the... Uh, uh, the the black red eyed kind of sinister ones, uh, they say automatically how they have a feeling of just pure evil in the air. You know, they they see the light in the sky or the light in the woods or what looks like the craft on the ground emanating kind of a an eerie glow, and then they'll see a group of these things, you know, coming close to them, you know, out of the woods. And uh, they just say that uh, immediately uh, there, there's such a sense of evil and darkness. I remember uh, a documentary that I have. I believe it's called UFOs Down Under. And it's about uh, UFO and alien encounters in Australia. And there were a couple of women that were, you know, driving, uh, I guess, back home, wherever they were coming from. It was nighttime. And they saw this light in the sky. It almost seemed like it was following their car. And at one point, they were driving, and there was this open field on one side of the road. And they saw this this craft, you know, sitting in the middle of the field. And I don't remember if they observed uh, the craft from the car or whether one of them stepped out of the car. But again, you know, here's this bizarre craft just emanating this light and uh, out of the craft emerges these uh, three shapes it was three or four and began to approach them and they described them as being the the tall black red-eyed uh, you know UFO occupants that that seemed kind of sinister and they said you know immediately they were just overtaken with this sense of like evil and dread and panic. And uh, that's the last thing they remember. You know, they had missing time. They blacked out. They were 
they were taken. And with some of these beings, there's also the uh, reports of a very foul smell of like sulfur or something rotting in the air. So again, if, if you're getting into human beings that have evolved into these uh, different species or this is how we look like in the future, uh, why are there so many? Why are there the greys? Why are there uh, some looking like, you know, insects? Why do others look uh, reptilian? Why are there others that, you know, emanate these foul smells and seem very sinister and just, you know, invoke the, the, the feeling of, of panic and dread when, uh, you know, someone's in their presence? There's just too many yeah buts, you know, in the whole time travel scenario for me. And, you know, if if we know anything about uh, ufology, we, we know that there are different species of uh, supposed aliens or whatever they are that uh, people have, you know, reported seeing. And, uh, you know, we, we've written them down, we have sketches, we have makeups of, you know, what, what they look like. And, uh, I, f I forget how many, um, how many categories or species of aliens, uh, we supposedly know about or people have encountered, uh, so far with this whole phenomenon, but it's, it's quite a few. And then if you've listened to my, uh, the show that I was a guest on, um, it's called Paranormal Heart. If if you go on YouTube and you put in Paranormal Heart or Paranormal Heart, uh, Cat Ward K A T W A R D, uh, you know you'll you'll come across this podcast, uh, Cat Ward's podcast, Paranormal Heart. You scroll down, you'll see where I'm the guest, and uh, we talk about the four one one missing person cases, and uh, you know it comes up, you know where we're talking about. Sasquatch and Mothman and, you know, all these, you know, some of these cryptids that some people think are responsible. And, uh, you know, Kat made the, uh, the, uh, the statement, um, that, you know, it's interesting with, with, uh, Bigfoot or Sasquatch and, you know, a lot of these cryptids is that usually where there's a big UFO flap, these things show up. So we have to think about this too. If if UFOs are us from the future, then what are the cryptids that factor into or are many times seen when there's a big UFO flap or a lot of sightings somewhere? There's always, a, you know, a dogman or a Bigfoot or a Mothman or, you know, whatever. Um, are they us too? Uh, are these the new pets of humans in the future that they're sending out to be scouts for something? You know, there's there, there's a lot in ufology that, as I said, it 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 doesn't it doesn't line up with or gel with the time travel theory. Unless you're talking about human beings, you know, evolving into some spooky mother effers, you know, because I mean, you know, when you when you really dig into this, uh, uh, you know, whole UFO phenomenon, there, there's some really uh, there's some interesting stuff, but there's also some very creepy stuff that goes along with it. Like a lot of people, uh, and I've mentioned this on, on the show before in episodes past. People will uh, just see a UFO, you know, they'll walk outside their home, they'll look out the window, they'll see this uh, biz bizarre light in the sky or this craft that's hovering there. Nothing else happens except seeing the craft. And then within a matter of days or so, suddenly there's all kind of poltergeist-like activity happening in the home that wasn't there before. And sometimes people experience this when they might see uh, a craft or a craft accompanied by beings near their home. And suddenly it's like their house becomes haunted. You know, it's, it's, it's very peculiar, very uh, 
kind of creepy stuff uh, in parts. So if they're us, you know, uh, why did we evolve to be so damn creepy? Why are we coming back into the past and just being almost subhuman? You know, we're like taking other human beings, you know, our own species from the past and traumatizing them with these uh, experiments and these weird things that they do to them on these uh, operating table, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, experiences. Why the poltergeist activity? Why the smell of sulfur and something or, you know, rotten in the air? Why the sense of dread? Why the cryptids? You know, why... Why cattle mutilation? You know, there's a hundred and one whys you could ask. You know, uh, I, I I guess you could say if that's us in the future, that man, maybe we evolved uh, physically and maybe even mentally to some capacity where we're able to do these, uh, you know, amazing feats like walk through a solid wall. But, you know, what does it say for the evolution of our soul, the evolution of our human morality, how, how we treat one another? Because the, the alien abduction experience is usually uh, very cold, um, very frightening. The people recall being very afraid, very painful procedures, and it just seems to go on, you know, very cold, very, very routine, no, uh, you know, not a whole lot uh, of regard for the pain that they're putting someone in. So what, what happened to our moral fiber? Now, one of the things I came up with when I was thinking about this this morning and doing this show is you have a lot of people right now who are talking about that when they die, they want to upload or find a way to upload their consciousness into artificial intelligence or into some kind of uh, computer program you know, almost like living in uh, a matrix. So I would think about that, you know, if these things are us from the future, are these the people who found a way to download their consciousness, their memories, their mind into something else, some kind of AI, some kind of, um, computer generated something where they're really not any longer human. That maybe they have a lot of intelligence stored in their, their big bulbous cranium, but they don't have a lot of empathy or emotion or caring and compassion for fellow creatures. They're just very cold, very calculated, very scientific. Do what they need to to do to get the data they want for whatever reason they want it for. So could these things be us from the future? Not all of us, but some of us who tried to hold on to our our mortality, try to live forever, try to escape death, found a way to upload consciousness into something else. And this is what it is. And this is why it acts the way it acts and can do the things that it does. Is it a computer program? Is, is it, is it like a living hologram? You know, have people found a way in the future to download or upload their consciousness before death into some kind of, you know, artificial intelligence, uh, living hologram. And maybe this is how these things can shape shift, walk through walls, be there one minute, go on the next, because they're almost like a projection 
into our reality. But yet some through, somehow through that projection, they can interact with us, touch us, uh, do whatever it is they do. Now, it's an interesting thought too, because some people say that during the alien abduction experience, they feel like they were taken out of, there was a part of them, like their consciousness was taken out of their body, or they had an out-of-body experience where they would look back and see their body on the bed, but yet they were being taken through the ceiling, through the wall, through a closed window. So could they be us or some of us from the future that uh, are some kind of artificial intelligence projection slash hologram slash who knows what? And maybe they're interacting more with us on the psychological or plane of consciousness somehow. But that's some deep waters that, uh, you know, is, is just a thought of my own that uh, I thought was kind of interesting. And, you know, I would also say if that is the case, uh, I think these, was, these would obviously the pe be the people that... Um, I don't know, they, they do what they do for their own sake or for the sake of science or for the sake of, you know, whatever they're doing it for and, and nothing else matters. The, the lack of, uh, you know, empathy, the lack of compassion for other creatures when you're talking about animal mutilations and things that are done to people. Um, I would say if, if somehow it is us from the future, something went very wrong. You know, we may, maybe we developed these powers that look to us now here in the past to be supernatural. You know, maybe we evolved our consciousness where we can speak to one another and even, uh, you know, even those human beings in the past that telepathic mind-to-mind -mind communication. Maybe we evolved all this stuff somehow, but we lost our humanity. We lost our souls. Something went wrong where we're not compassionate or kind anymore. Because that's one thing you find in a high number of UFO uh, encounters, abductions, encounters with UFO occupants. Um, many of them are not uh, very friendly. They're, they're not very pleasant at all in one way or another. There are those that uh, are less threatening, but it seems that in those, the people are usually given a lot of false information. Why are you doing this? Well, because in the year 1999, there's a great earthquake, there's a great plague. This happens, that happens. It's for the survival of the species. But of course, 1999 or 2000 or whatever year, I'm just picking out of a hat here, uh, whatever information they're told uh, never happens. So it's false information. It's it's lies, it's deceptive, it's whatever the case may be, but uh, these beings, even in the, the non-threatening percentage of UFO and UFO occupant uh, encounters, uh, the information turns out to be faulty. So why? I, I find it all to be uh, very suspect just based on evidence, character, information given, you know, there's just, again, there's a whole host of things that make you look at the, the time travel uh, theory and say something just doesn't fit, something just isn't right about that. And if they are us from the future, then, you know, we have to ask the question, what have we become? 
because you know I'm I'm as fascinated by UFOs as the next person when it comes to that particular subject. But I also know that stuff can be damn creepy. It can be damn weird. It can be damn traumatizing. It can be damn painful. You know, it can be downright, uh, you know, frightening. People have had this abduction experience and they've had severe depression, nervous breakdowns. I mean, the, the aftermath was not good whatsoever. So why, why would we do that to our former selves in the past? It seems, it seems rather heartless. It seems rather soulless. It seems rather, Hey, you know, um, as some people, well, you know, the aliens, uh, they're going to be so far above us in their technology and in their ways that, you know, uh, we're going to seem like ants in an anthill. You know, how can they communicate their great wisdom to us? Well, you know what? You could try. If you're that intelligent, break it down a little. They can obviously speak our language or speak in terms that we understand because many people that have had the abduction scenario have said they did, even if that's mind-to-mind communication. So they can speak in terms that we understand. So giving misinformation or playing the, well, I'm so much smarter than you, you'll never get it. Uh, you know, that, again, that's, um, that's kind of suspect to me. I, I would question the motive. And I would also make the assumption, hey, you might have all these great gadgets and toys and UFOs and you can walk through walls and whatever it else is that, that you can do. But that doesn't necessarily mean you are superior to myself or Joe Smith down the road. Because I think that personally, common sense, morality, ethics, compassion, all those things are very important to the human makeup, who we are as people, as a species, who we are as you know, a spiritual species. And I think if those things are lacking, then it doesn't matter how much money, what kind of evolution, what kind of ability or technology we possess. If we're lacking in those fundamental things, then we are not superior. But, you know, that's just my uh, conclusion and two cents uh, rounding off the podcast here. Again, what, what do you guys think? Leave me a comment. Send me an email, nocturnalmagic at gmail.com. Comment if you're watching this on one of the video platforms. Send me a message through uh, Facebook. Friend me. Send me a friend request. Shoot me a message. What do you guys think? Do you think UFOs are us from the future or do you think it's something else? As always, I appreciate you listening. Stay safe out there, everybody, and I'll see you next time here on The Spirit Side.